Hello guys, welcome back again to my channel. Today's video is going to be a little bit different because I'm going to talk about do you really have what it takes to become a flight attendant. I decided to make this video based on your questions because I get lots of questions from people who are interested in becoming flight attendant and they are asking me a whole variety of questions. But I think that your perception of how this job really looks like might be a little bit different from reality. But if you expect me talking about like, oh, just smile, look good, uh, look glamorous, walk and look nice and just stand there and look pretty. Uh, and if you think that's what cabin crew really life is about and just serve a little drink here and there, you might quit this video and exit right now because you will get really disappointed. Before we jump into the video, I just want to ask you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that yet, so you'll get notified about my upcoming content. Okay, first of all, let's start with the initial training. Training is Bravo India Tango Charlie Hotel, to say the least. And if you got that, you already pass a first step of becoming flight attendant because we speak the same language. The training really is exhausting, long hours, you get up very early, it's very challenging, it's, um, it requires constant focus, there's lots of uh, industry professional vocabulary and let's face it, not everybody's uh, first language is English, so you might face that a little bit difficult. I've been to university, I have a master degree in finance and corporate governance, so obviously I'm not dumb. But believe me, going through that training was not a very easy thing, because it was physically and mentally very challenging. So prepare yourself for that, and then you have to pass the exams, which are like so much knowledge, so, much new, so many new things at the same time, and so many information that you accumulated over past few weeks of that training and then you have to pass the exams and uh, you are in the new environment and there's a lot of pressure. Be believe me, it is a bit stressful and I've seen girls crying and uh, just, just saying, get ready. The book CPO manual is like this big. Plus you have to pass like CPR uh, exams, like first um, eight exams, not only technical knowledge, uh, not only service, but the majority of the training is safety and technical knowledge. So that requires lots of focus. Just say. So if your only worry about becoming flight attendant is passing a rich test, because uh, I'm touching this subject because I get lots of lots of questions recently about rich tests. Like if, how am I going to pass a rich test to, re to reach the certain uh, arm length. Um, to be honest, I was not even aware of that rich test when I was going to apply. Quit that worry. Start worrying about training and exams. An assessment day is really a piece of cake in comparison to what initial training really is. But before the training starts, you already have to face another uh, challenges to go through and to overcome like moving to another country, leaving your family behind, moving to a foreign country which is very different from where you come from. You have to adjust uh, to a different culture, different environment, um, being lonely at first, uh, to share, sharing an apartment with a flatmate who like it's not maybe your like colleague. So that's a lot of things to overcome. You are away from your everyday support system, you are lonely and uh, you will probably cry because everybody cried. Now, let's say you went through all these, you overcome all those changes, you, you made it through all the challenges, uh, you moved here, you are accommodated, you living your life here, you went through training, you passed all your exams, well done for you, yay! You are ready to... Uh, to just get your wings to fly, to wear your well-deserved uniform and just get ready to enjoy and experience all the amazing benefits that this glamorous life and this really amazing job has to offer. 
So you're ready for all of this. Wait. Get ready for the fact and get ready to acknowledge the reality that you are not there to look good and be like, mm -hmm, oh, I'm a cabin crew, la la la, life is awesome. Yeah, it is awesome, but it comes with uh, lots of um, difficult moments as well. If you get yourself ready for that, and if you get your mind around that you are not there just to look good, you will have easier transition process to become a flight attendant. So I know it might be shocking to some people, but in contrary to what you might think, I mean what the general vision of this job is, you are there to work with people and you are there to take care of people. And uh, in Middle East we fly huge airplanes, not like other airlines, I mean no shade, but uh, we fly 380 double decker, there are like 400 people to take care of in economy class almost. So you get my idea, there are lots of people, it's not like you are going through 320 small uh, airplane and you have like 80 people, no, it's a lot of people and that comes with lots of responsibilities and lots of expectations. And trust me, traveling brings out the worst out of people sometimes and you have to have really good people skills to balance this out working with all those people from different cultures and that includes as well passengers as well as your colleagues both you really have to be assertive because otherwise people will walk over you i mean you have to be very kind polite you, ha you are there to deliver service and take care of their safety first but you also really have to be assertive because when people will see your wig they will walk all over you and trust me i've seen crew crying because of passengers because they are not ready to face dealing with different kind of people who are screaming at you who are shouting who are demanding who are non-stop but you have to have character features that will allow you to handle that, not only to face that, to handle that properly, to de-escalate and to deal with that the best way possible. And those are the features of character that recruiters are searching for in the assessment day, not only the rich test, believe me. You have to be kind, uh, patient, compassionate, assertive. You have to be vigilant and aware and see what's going around because maybe somebody's sick, maybe people are shy to tell you how they feel because they are afraid that the travel might be denied but they really feel sick and you have to react early enough to avoid medical emergency or something. You have to get yourself prepared for the fact that you might be dealing with or facing medical emergency and that can be very stressful and that can be also challenging and sometimes nasty. Being in such a long flight, like ultra long haul flight for 14 hours, you have to be prepared that you might be facing medical emergency, blood, vomit, trash, uh, people fighting, people getting drunk, intoxicated, uh, people screaming at you, being demanding, and all these while you are, whilst you are busy, whilst you are tired, whilst maybe you don't feel your best, as well, you didn't sleep before the flight, you couldn't sleep during the rest, um, but you have to put all of that aside and handle all this that is going on in a professional, calm, positive manner. The other thing that you will face during this job is tiredness. You will be tired and you have to get prepared for being really tired because just being tired like on a regular basis, it's nothing comparing to flight attendant tiredness, sleep deprivation is a huge part of this job, like really you are all the time tired, even now I'm tired. <laughs> you will be flying to different time zones, you will be crossing um, time zones, you will be in a different climate, uh, waking up, you don't know where you are, uh, you are really really tired flying after minimum rest, long haul flights, short haul flights, turnarounds, all of this makes you makes your body really feel that tiredness. You also have to be prepared 
that maybe you will be flying only turnarounds or maybe only night flights for a long time or maybe only ultra long haul flights which affects your body physically and mentally as well. Being a cabin crew requires a certain set of skills, character and so like you just have to be a people person but you have to be tough. I think I covered everything or probably not, probably there is so much more to cover but it just doesn't come to my mind now because I'm tired and sleep deprived. But the reason why I'm telling you all this, it's not to scare you off or to discourage you from going after your dream, if this is your dream. If this is your dream, at any cost, I think you should go for it and you should try it and you should experience that if that's what you want because this is an amazing career and it really brings you lots of joy and happiness. But I just want you to be aware of what you are signing yourself into. It's not a piece of cake, it's not easy job, you will be lonely here, this is a very demanding job. Um, and you have to get ready for all of that, but do not give up on going for it, go for it. Being a flight attendant in the Middle East, it's, I would say, quite different than being a flight attendant in your original home country, while you are surrounded by your friends and family on an everyday basis and you live at home. It's also different than being a flight attendant in Europe when you fly mostly short roads or like turnarounds. So there, there are a lot, a lot of differences, but maybe I'll cover that in a different video. My point is to make you aware of what goes with that job. Everything that is great in life comes with some uh, difficulties to achieve that. And you have to be prepared for that. There is no perfect job. There is no um, job that it only has a good things to it. And you should know that. But regardless from that, I think it's worth it. That's why I'm still here, right? I hope this video, um, I hope you find this video helpful. I hope you, um, you have more clear vision of what this job is about. If you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments be below. Please give this video a thumbs up so I know to make more video like this in the future. And just let me know if there's anything else you're interested about Cabin Crew Life. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate each and every single of your comment and of your views and of your subscribe. I really enjoy that and I hope that you find my channel helpful and that you enjoy my videos. So I'll see you next time and bye.